and Matthew, and, and we yeah. are The Critics. So the film that we're reviewing this week is Django. So you may notice that that hasn't recently come out. Yeah. So what we want to do, and we're hoping to do more of this in the future, is look back at old films. Throwbacks. Throwbacks. But initially, the reason that we're doing this one is because currently we don't think there's anything too exciting out at the moment to watch. But more importantly, we're both huge Tarantino fans. And for South African viewing audiences, Tarantino's Hateful Eight comes out next weekend for us. Yes. So we thought what best way to get ready for uh, Western Tarantino than to watch Django. Which is his best uh, Western, I think. Is that his only Western? Yeah. Okay. So we will be doing well. <laughs> okay. So first things first, uh, you watch a Tarantino because it's Tarantino. So the first thing that I want to talk about is three things that you come to expect from a Tarantino movie and whether or not Django achieves those three things. And accordingly, the trifecta. Is it, the trifecta. And accordingly, whether or not Django is there for a good Tarantino. Right. Go for it. I think it's fair to say if you hate Tarantino, you're not going to ever enjoy a Tarantino film. Yeah. And we are Tarantino true. fans yeah. as a disclosure right up front from this. So the three things that we expect is one, blood. Lots of blood. Lots of excessive like amounts of blood. blood. Like everywhere. everywhere yeah. And Django has that. Yeah. But I think what it has nicely done uh, is that it's put it in the right places. It was always relevant. I thought that, uh, you know, it was never done in a kill bill sort of fashion where it was just blood everywhere. For the sake of yeah, blood. for the sake of just having blood. It felt relevant, it felt relevant to the story what was happening at the time, yeah. So yeah, and I think, um, I mean, there's reasons that it happens in Kill Bill and it works really well in mm. Kill Bill, and there's a reason it doesn't happen in Kill Bill Volume 2, mm. and for reasons, uh, we'll review those one day, but for here it worked perfectly. The second thing we expect is a cameo. By Tarantino By Tarantino. Himself. He's so awkward. But Amazingly okay. awkward, especially <laughs> when he now tries to put on this Australian accent. Australian accent. accent. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> And the criticism that they always exist to that is that it breaks the imagination, is that it breaks that fourth wall, is that you mm. go, oh, I'm watching a movie, I'm no longer engrossed in that. Yes. But if the excessive amounts of blood haven't broken that for you, then I don't know what is going to, why this is special. Yeah. Um, but I also think that it's, if it wasn't there, it wouldn't feel Tarantino-ish, and as we said, you watch Tarantino because you are a Tarantino fan. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and so I think that, that trumps, for me, I always look forward to it, it's always awkward, you always grimace, and it always makes all the other actors and actresses look a million times better, because yeah. when you interact with them, it's chalk and cheese. True. Um, but, but it's part of what we love it. What it comes through more in Django, though, and the other thing that you expect from a Tarantino film, uh, are conversations. Thought-provoking dialogue yeah. between and, the characters. And long conversations where a lot gets dealt with, Sometimes conversations that you only get once you've watched it several times or yeah. spoken to people about it. Uh, but you guarantee to have a lot of conversation. And Django has a lot of very clever conversations, I think. I think the, the setting of the film lends itself to having those deep thought-provoking conversations yeah. with the gift of hindsight on America's history. And all of the characters engaged in those, whether it was Leonardo's character, or Django and Dr. Schultz, Schultz yeah. um, or, you know, yeah, just the general dialogue was, was very thought-provoking. And a lot of phrases you could take there yeah. uh, on their own as iconic, yeah. Yeah, and I just think really, and we'll get to uh, timing and everything later, but just really well timed conversations, yeah. like when uh, Schultz is talking to Django in the, mo in the mountains in the beginning of the movie and tells a story uh, the German story of, of uh, yeah, it's Django cuts it short, mm -hmm. and we get to the point of the story much quicker than you would ordinarily expect a person to tell a folk story, because it's meant to be, you know, they're all generally very long stories, and you find out how they do the fighting, and how he mm -hmm. saved the girl, whereas we get to the point very quickly, what it, that conversation is meant to achieve is achieved in a very short space of time, mm -hmm. uh, and even that, like, Django's not someone to wait around to do things, yeah. so I just think, yeah. We always, we always expect very clever, thought-provoking, well-constructed conversations, and we got that in Django. Definitely. The script, I mean, it was written and directed by Tarantino. Yeah. So the script was really brilliant, we thought. 
to move on to Django as yes. a character himself, what a great character, an icon yeah. um, in today's world, definitely. And he did sort of have a superhero type of styling about him with his clothes and his trademark glasses and hats. Uh, he was a man of very few words, but the few that he did say sort of stuck, stuck with you. Uh, we discussed it and we said, you know, he was sort of a reluctant hero throughout the film. Yeah. Um, Matthew will discuss, uh, you know, the backdrop of slavery just now. But he didn't realize that even though he was on his mission, his own mission to find his wife and get revenge, which Tarantino loves as well. Yeah. Revenge is a plot that he takes to the max. Um, he still had an impact on the greater issue of slavery and the slaves around him. And you saw that right at the end where he blows up his new owners and... Well, they don't have Broomhilda's new owners. No, the mining company. Oh, yes, okay. And his other slaves sort of, you know, acknowledge him as he rides off into the sunset. Yeah. Um, so he, in his own way, he does impact uh, the, the other slaves around him. So he, he was a reluctant hero, but we commend Tarantino for developing his character. Really, yeah, and, really well. and I think, you know, characters are characters because of how they interact. And I mm. think Schultz, Dr. Schultz's death was an incredibly important moment yes, in Django's character development because yes. we then got to see Django without any assistance go from captured to having a plan to get Broomhilda back to achieving getting Broomhilda back and riding off into the sunset that wasn't a you know no one else can take claim or ownership yeah. of the defining moment or the pinnacle and of his he character. He had used the devices that Dr. Schultz had taught him directly yeah. so you sort of understood their relationship better yeah. through that. Um, so I think another thing that we see a lot of in Tarantino, and we especially see in Django, and it speaks to what you're talking about uh, with uh, how, how Django uh, has his own mission, is that this is very much a one-man story. Mm. You know, I don't think Tarantino set out to say, you know... Uh, Let me tell the greater story of slavery in an emotional way. He used Django as a device to, yeah. to walk us through that. Yeah, um, and as much as Django wasn't... Uh, too concerned with you know freeing every slave. I think it's I think it would have been painful to watch if that had been his quest because yes. that didn't happen in reality. Yes. Uh, Django is fictitious, and so I think it's I think it's really good storytelling when you s can still speak to the atrocities that go on during a time period mm. without impacting on them because that's insulting to then people who in real life went out and actually did make changes yes. and did sacrifice their lives and did achieve things, mm. um, and so I'm incredibly glad that it didn't do that, and it got a bit of fact for doing that, I think, but, yeah. but I, I don't see any other way to tell this fictional story set in a very real and very oppressive uh, and just generally awful time, in, especially American, but this one kill ourselves slavery was everywhere and has been everywhere and still is existing. Mm. Um, you know, I think it, it told that story as well as it could have told it brutally, which I think it needed to do. Yeah, um, that's... That is one of the points we raise where it might make you feel uncomfortable to watch, but a film about slavery that doesn't make you feel uncomfortable is not achieving its goal. Um, and as much as characters like Leonardo's character were disgusting and, and, and terrible to watch, you know, when they made uh, the slaves fight each other and just how brutal it was, I think it was realistic. I think it might have been like that and even worse. Yeah, I think um, we're kidding ourselves to think that... It was flowery and, and yeah. happy. It wasn't. It was terrible. Mm. So he managed to achieve that while telling Django's story perfectly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Lastly, lastly, before you go into that, lastly, I think what could have just dawned on me now is that we don't see excessive blood when mm. things are happening to slaves in the film. Yes, that's true. So it's, it's never... Violent, it's, it's never... And so we all get that the blood is slightly comic, and so that never happens. He never uses that device, mm. even when um, the guy is being torn apart by dogs. Yeah. It's, there's, there's never excessive blood loss or gore in that moment. It's a horrific moment, but it's never the blood device that we see Tarantino use is never used during that moment, which I think is a very significant nod to the seriousness of in which parts, yeah. and what he set it in. Yeah. Um, well, discussing the slavery issue, Leonardo DiCaprio's character. Yeah. Calvin Candy, what, what an amazing character, well written, 
perfectly acted by Leo. I think he sort of managed to tie the story together when it may have experienced a bit of a lull. Um, mm. we've, we've been following Dr. Schultz and Django so closely until that moment. And he just comes in there and sweeps us all of our feet. Charming but disgusting at the same time. And uh, like you said, he, he, he's focused on characters. In my opinion, each character could have had their own film. Very much so. Um, and the way he develops Leonardo's character, even on his own, without interacting with anyone else, it justifies the epic ending of the film. It justifies why Django had to, you know, blow that whole place up and <clears throat> his vengeance towards him. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, I was very impressed. That I think that would be my favorite character from the whole film, and the way Leo acted. And the relationship between him and Samuel's character, yeah, yeah, that was, I think, also quite realistic. Yeah, I think that happened often during that time where the head slave of the house would sort of think they had more privileges than the others, when in fact everyone was being treated badly. Yeah. Um, yeah, but no, his I think choice was amazing there. Yeah, well. yeah, Tarantino always has an amazing cast. Mm, people want to be in his films. Yeah. Um, and I th yeah, and I think incredible. Actor. I don't think it's a comfortable character to play. Definitely not. Um, and yet I think Leo potentially appreciated what the, the backdrop and why he was important to portraying the atrocities. A weak character in that position would have just made it very comic. Mm. Uh, he was a perfect foil for Django. Yeah, you know, and as much as we could mock the, I can't remember his name, but uh, Mr. Kentucky. Um, Big Daddy. Big Daddy. Daddy as much as we can mock him and there's mockery going on at that stage, it wouldn't have fitted well with yes. the Candy yes. character. He had to be terrible. Yes. But charming. Yeah. Um, so the last thing that we want to talk about is the timing and flow of the movie. Because uh, we said right at the beginning before we watched this that it was going to be a three hour long movie and we were thinking, oh, it's going to take so long to get through. Bollywood. Bollywood, yeah. Uh, and yet, an hour into it, we it hadn't felt like any time at all had passed. Yeah, it moves very quick. Every scene seems relevant. Yeah, and I think that's it's a huge credit to just how well timed and edited this was. Mm. We spoke about the shock scene earlier where I think other filmmakers would have taken forever to tell that story about uh, Brumhilde. Uh, and then even uh, at the end, yeah. we it's very quick. I mean, that final Django comes in, shoots some people, has a conversation with Samuel, blows up house. It could have been a bloodbath again, but he, he tied it together quite quickly. Yeah, I mean, we got our payoff without unnecessarily dragging it out. Yes. Because the film, I think you could argue, was beginning to feel a bit long at that stage. Yeah. And another filmmaker may have just dragged that out in order to, and then it would have been frustrating before we got our payoff at the end. Definitely. Uh, the same goes with the music. I mean, there yeah. was a constant soundtrack playing throughout the film whether it was the character theme or a random hip hop tune thrown in here here and there or a Johnny Cash Western feeling song thrown in. Uh, but that speaks to Tarantino's technique. Um, he's reminding us that he is a modern filmmaker, but at the same time this is a story placed in a period, in a specific period. Yeah. He does that so well with, with most of his films. The soundtrack is as important as you know the rest of it. And as much as you say random, I mean, it's random for us, but when you hear it, we wouldn't have thought put in there, but it's, it fits so incredibly yeah. well for that moment. You, it, it adds to the story or it adds to the character. Uh, even when there's hip-hop in the middle of a Western, uh, you're like, yeah, no, that works perfectly well, for me yeah. right now, uh, which I think is a, a, tr uh, a positive for Tarantino as a whole and the film. So, shall we rate this one? Let's rate this. So... I'm giving it a yeah. two thumbs up. Uh, we told you at the beginning that we were big Tarantino fans. We think this delivers for Tarantino fans and just is a really good film overall. Django. Yeah, love Django. very much so. Cool. Thank you for watching, guys. If you liked our video, please subscribe to our channel. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. The links are in the description box below. And we'll keep you updated there on what we're doing next week. I'm Talia. I'm Matthew. And this has been the Critics Review of Django Unchained.